Meghan had to act fast. Prince Harry's sister-in-law had just hit the headlines and there was no time to waste. Danger, danger, red alert. Princess Kate was stealing the limelight in a major way. What could Meghan do to regain the attention she so enthusiastically pursues? Oh, my God, was it time to press the dog biscuits button? Yes, that would knock Kate off the front pages, wouldn't it? No. Somehow, newspapers around the world decided that the Princess of Wales appearing at the King's birthday trooping of the colour ceremony, despite her brave battle to beat cancer, was a slightly more compelling story than former game show Glamour Girl, the Duchess of Sussex, launching her very own range of dog biscuits. What were the editors thinking? Talk about bad news sense. OK, I'm just joking, and this is just my speculative fairy tale version of events after Courageous Kate revealed in an emotional statement that she would be a conspicuous guest at Trooping the Colour. Her first public appearance for six months. London was a buzz. In fact, the whole world was on the edge of its seat. Did this really trigger Meghan's bizarre dog biscuit publicity broadside? If so, she's hardly likely to admit it. But her announcement came across like a desperate, jealous attempt to scream from the West Coast, What about me? Was this a cynical bid to upstage her wildly popular rival Kate, wife of Harry's hated brother William? You decide. Oh, I almost forgot, there's also a new jam on the scene. After sending jars of allegedly homemade strawberry jam to 50 VIPs, most of whom didn't seem to want to know, apparently Megan has now developed, drumroll, an exciting new raspberry option. These powerhouse products are all part of the Duchess's much talked about American Riviera Orchard lifestyle site, which, after its launch four months ago, has yet to sell a single item, mainly because there's nothing available to buy. For people like me, anxious to purchase overpriced tat, beige cushions and unnecessary kitchenware, this commercial inactivity remains an ongoing disappointment. When exactly is Megan opening for business? Just asking. Meanwhile, what exactly is Harry doing with himself these days? Is he really still planning to bore us all rigid with his uneagerly awaited TV series about the world's dreariest sport, Polo? Will the gruesome twosomes feature film Meet Me at the Lake be hitting the screen anytime soon? They bought the rights to the best-selling novel last summer. It's in development, as in we're still hanging on for developments, any developments. Behind the gilded gates of their Montecito mansion, shimmering under the Californian sun, what is actually going on? And to find out, Will we have to wait for another Machiavellian Meghan moment? One of those royal show-stealing opportunities the media-savvy Duchess of Netflix so rarely misses? Just asking. Well, I think the first person I'd like to ask a question about uh, this is, of course, our special guest, Kinsey Schofield. That's just an appalling thing to do, and she's got form, hasn't she? I think if we are going to talk about coincidences, we mm. should acknowledge the fact that we believe Oprah Winfrey also received some of this jam, mm. and it was her best friend, Gail King, that revealed that she's recently had raging bouts of diarrhea. And so, Ooh. if we want to acknowledge coincidences, <laughs> then there's one that I think we should really focus on. But yes, it, it seems absolutely cruel. Catherine has been through so much, and I'm not just talking about cancer, which is absolutely horrendous. Mm. It's the massive trolling and the misinformation mm. that you've seen online. Some of the rumors that have been spread are, are, are insane, absolutely insane. So the idea that, uh, that Meghan would want to take steal the spotlight uh, for Catherine's big return is appalling. It's just so so tacky. I mean, Simon, she's got form on this. And what they do, uh, the gruesome twosome, uh, Megan and that ginger guy she's married to, they cannot let uh, William and Kate do a thing without trying to get in on the act and say, we're here too. I don't think it is. I think that sometimes some of these things are coincidental. 
And I think that... <laughs> Come on, Simon. They've got a team... Lots of coincidences. Sorry. No, no, no. They've got a team of PR people around them. Megan knew that all the eyes were going to be on her uh, when Kate was seen at the Tripping of the Colour, but, you know, her reaction to it. So what does she do? It's the most cheap, last-ditch attempt at getting any sort of popularity or any sort of notoriety. She goes and grabs a tin of dog biscuits. You actually, if you... <laughs> I don't know. If you analyse the photo, there isn't even, like, a product information on the back. It's not a commercial dog biscuit thing. Yeah. It's something that's been mocked up together. It's basically a sample and she's gone and posted it and it's the most cheap <laughs> effort. Oh my God. Oh, Simon's Please. sitting there like this. I know. And the worst part is <laughs> okay. seven Sorry. PR people probably worked on that post. Yeah. Okay, she didn't post it for starters. Oh, was... so you are admitting she didn't post... oh, That's true. She, she didn't post, post it for really starters. True. So let's get some facts in here, first of all. Well, actually, we don't my, like to deal with facts. On my shouty show. friend... Um, we have a guest here getting the who, I know, the stories. who I know likes to deal in facts. She didn't post it. It was a friend of theirs who posted it. We don't know when he was given the jam. We don't know when he was given the dog biscuit. So we are <laughs> filling in so the gaps ridiculous. here. We are filling in the gaps here of, of adding two and two and making five. Yes, she does have form. So therefore, mm. I can't sit here and argue that's not something that she might not do. However, as you said in your monologue, you know, hoping that it would be picked up by editors all over the world. It wasn't. The only people who really picked up on it are commentators like yourselves and the social media people. Uh, also, it received hundreds of thousands of views, yeah. videos that discussed this. People, people did interview. respond to it, Simon. Yeah. TikTok so, went wild. People responded, yeah. people responded to the fact that no, he no, had they posted felt, it. They felt it was a publicity manoeuvre yes. yes. by Megan at a very inappropriate time. Yes, right, yeah, but, right, Kinsey? Yeah, I, I mean... I, I want to, if we pretend it's coincidence, Nacho certainly, Harry's friend, certainly saw that the Princess of Wales had not only announced she was going to appear at tro Trooping, but said, mm -hmm. you know, she wasn't past the toughest parts and that every day was, mm -hmm. you know, a roller coaster. She has mm -hmm. good days and bad days. It was a really emotional, um, and I can tell you in, in America, that was everywhere. Yeah. That was breaking news. Yes. Yeah. And so we know that Nacho saw it. We also no know that Nacho knows that Harry and Meghan are very fickle, burn bridges at the drop of a hat, mm -hmm. and won't do anything to jeopardize his relationship with them. Mm. Uh, look, I'm, uh, as, as you say, she has form. I just don't believe that I think this is a case of two and two making five, and I'm willing to give them the benefit you of the doubt. You did say earlier, Simon, yeah, well, yeah, she's, there's been a, a lot of coincidences. Uh, once you get to that point, you think, well, there's so many coincidences, they're not coincidences. Well, well listen, yes, to flip that, you know, the boy who cried wolf or the woman who cries wolf every time, it's hard to discern what's a coincidence and what is staged. However, what I do think is that you know, the way, and we're, we're involved in this as well, the way that we look at these people un under a microscope yeah. all the time, it's very difficult to not see this thing connected to that thing connected to this thing connected yeah. to that thing. It seems that when you're when you're yeah. looking at people, if you, you can discern stories you, a lot. OK, if you uh, read Tom Bauer's book about Harry and Meghan, uh, it is full. Basically, the, the picture you get of Meghan, Samara, is this woman who's obsessed with her own image. She... she obsessively fuels stories about herself, herself, yes. herself. Uh, uh, it's, it's throughout the book. So, you know, the idea that Megan just sort of absent-mindedly said, oh, I think I'll put my dog biscuits out today. Oh, look, uh, Kate's announced she's uh, going to be at the Trooping the Colour. Oh, well, that, that, that you know. It, she did it deliberately because she cannot stand, tomorrow the idea that uh, Kate will hog the front pages and if she thinks her... Dog bits are going to get on the front pages. You know, good luck with that, Meg. Yeah, absolutely. And where she always falls short is actually reading the room. I mean, dog biscuits and then Kate literally pulling herself together after doing chemotherapy yeah. and showing up looking absolutely stunning at the Tripping of the Colour. Mm. She thinks her dog biscuits are going to outweigh that. Oh, please, give me a break. I mean, ironically, <laughs> Ki ironically, Kinsey, I mean, she did get a lot of play over here about it because people were actually very annoyed about it. You know, as I said in my monologue, maybe, maybe, just maybe, I'll give her a 1% chance... She did it by accident. Yeah. Uh, but 99% of people over here thought, what the hell are you doing? Not today. And she's done this before. Would you say they thought, what just happened? Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they went, what? 
what's happening? Well, I, you know, from a PR perspective, what she's doing is she's trying to build hype for this brand because, like you said, nothing tangible is available mm -hmm. for purchase. So she's doing these little drops. But what she uh, and, and PR people have been like, oh, it's brilliant because when something finally does drop, it's going to immediately sell out. But you're absolutely correct. I, I think what she's doing is she's turning a lot of people off because it looks crass. Yeah, I think though that she's working incredibly hard to make herself a brand. And I think that people become a brand when they're known sort of by their first name. Kinsey, Kev, Madonna, you know, Samara. Silly. Uh, you, you know, but Elton. And we talk about her now as Meghan. And so we know that as a senior members of the royal family, they're kind of not allowed to work uh, they don't work for the royal family and they are actually trying to make money themselves. It's going to be a lot of dog biscuits you're going to have to well, shift yes. to uh, well, pay she for is. that house. She's not only to trying her. to make money, she's yeah. trying to make jam. Yeah. <laughs> She's trying to make money. She's trying to make money for jam. She's trying to make money. <laughs> money she's for jam. She's trying Except to... she's not making any <laughs> money because she can't buy the <laughs> stuff. She's trying to make money. She's trying to make jam. Whatever it is, but also she's yeah, trying to. They, all, they are also yeah, trying sure, to be yeah, a brand. Oh they are God, also. I mean, yeah, they, they are. I, I, I think it's, it's it's not just trying to build a brand. You're trying to uh, save your reputation because you have a horrible reputation mm -hmm. of being um, you of being just absolutely cruel towards the end of the Queen mm -hmm. and Prince Philip's life, and you've got to reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that assignment, you get, you got to grant Kinsey that. I mean, over here and, and, and in America, where, the, of course, the Queen was held in very high regard all over the world, especially in America. Yeah. Uh, but people will never forgive the gruesome twosome uh, for the horrors she put, they put Her Majesty through during her final years. I mean, they behaved appallingly. That is that is one perception of it. I also think <laughs> perception. That, that is about facts. That, that is, is facts. one perception. That is one. That that's a perception What's of the it. Other I perception also, that they behave really well. The other perception. The other perception Harry is Harry published quotes himself that yeah, affirmed that. The, the, the other perce the other perception is is that Harry was treated appallingly, felt that she wasn't protected, and therefore did everything they could to kind of stand up for themselves as independent members of the royal family and therefore breaking free. That is the other side of it, if you want to flip that coin. Can I Can I also, uh, well, ask all of you, really, uh, the other element of my brilliantly written monologue um, <laughs> by me. Uh, <laughs> mo modesty is my he's, greatest... He's modest not very well, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> modesty is my greatest trait. Uh, um, Harry, as I alluded to, what the hell is he up to? What is he doing? Anything? I mean... Well, uh, the only thing we know that's on the horizon is this polo, the yeah. Netflix Can polo show. Can I just interrupt show? for a second? Harry, Harry, please, <laughs> please, please don't make a series about polo, but carry on, sorry. And then he has, he's the um, CFO or some weird title, very gifted title of uh, a mental health company. And what we know he does there, because they just had to lay off a significant amount of people and those <laughs> people were angry saying, what does he do? But we do know that he does in person and like, you know, sessions, little conferences. So it does something. Yeah, but, but he, I've only, I think about once a year. I they actually that. said that he hadn't turned up in months. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he didn't really do anything virtually. He'd never been really in the office only a couple of times. $1,200 yeah. tickets. People bought $1,200 yeah. tickets to, uh, because they thought they were going to get to hear him speak. But, he, he, did yeah. but he only appeared yeah. in the in-person and would not allow it to go virtual. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, well, let's, let's uh, speculate so about, about uh, <laughs> uh, his, his no longer Royal Highness, the uh, Duke of Sussex. Is he a lazy bastard? Oh. Maybe, maybe he's at home being a dad, you know? Maybe he's at home bringing up two kids. Lazy! He yeah. he lazy! I mean, they don't get have a, a job! They to, don't have an today, army of nannies, do they? Today, yeah, is, they today is the day, of course, when it's uh, the Prince of Wales' birthday and he's posted a lovely photo of him and his kids jumping over the sand jeans. Oh, hang on. Hang maybe on, maybe on. Harry is I, doing I, that. Hang on. Let's let's wait for what, what will how will Meghan respond to that? Yeah, maybe exactly. maybe yeah. Harry is at home yeah. doing the same thing but just not posting so, online so, for everybody so, so, uh, for William, everybody William to and the, fawn over. William and the kids are jumping over a sand dune, right? Did you say? So uh stand by for a picture tomorrow of Meghan like leaping over a sort of mountain of sand going, "Call that a sand dune." <laughs> Here, yeah, you can buy some Montecito sand in this jar <laughs> I just produced, you uh, know. It's time now for a bad ad. In Alice Springs, chicken means just one thing. Tasty and hot to go. How can you resist with our new home delivery service? Wishbone chicken. For one or to feed the whole family. Chicken made the way mom used to. 
Wishbone chicken, tasty barbecue. Wishbone chicken. A delicious meal, as good as home cooking. For deliveries, find Wishbone Chicken, 529 555. South, South, South Melbourne Market. The old fashioned market with old fashioned prices. Fresh vegetables here today. Fresh fish. Flowers and plants. Fresh fruit. Ladies' fashions. Giftware. Come to our deli. There's everything at this market. And they're open on Sunday. South. <laughs> What's South Melbourne That's market? That's a bloody good market. Oh, okay. yes. <laughs> finally, finally an ad that resonates. That is a great place Just to so go. So you know Melbourne market? Yeah, absolutely. Which, which, is that your city? I'm, yes, I'm Melbourneian. South Melbourne market. You can get anything. Is that what you call them? Melbourneian. 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 Sounds like a Scottish football team. Yes, it also uh, sounds like a fungus, <laughs> but you know. Uh, that is a bloody <laughs> good market. That is hey, a bloody good market. Hey, you can get fish, hey, you can get a pair of jeans for $10. Go right, there. Right, right. So, <laughs> excellent. Can you get jam? Yeah. I wonder, I wonder <laughs> what, those are your clothes. I wonder where you got them all. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, South Proud. Melbourne Market, I'm there. Isn't it, Melbourne's where uh, Neighbours was, wasn't it? Yeah, Ramsey, Ramsey Street. Street. Yeah. Have you been to Ramsey Street? Uh, it's not a real place. I'm oh, sorry, Brits. I'm no, sorry, I Brits. It, I thought the cameras just went there. And it, it is was just but a film set. Part of Australian oh. life. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, let's have a little uh, preview of some of the messages we get to this show. Uh, they're usually to praise me. So I think, Samara, you've got one to praise me. Yes. You? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jude has said, guy with the glasses is abusive. <laughs> and disgusting, either right or wrong. I wouldn't be surprised if it came out that he was abusive to his own wife. What? what? <laughs> hey, listen, so this is it. So Simon's got his reading glasses on then. <laughs> Samara goes, the guy with the glasses is really abusive. Simon goes... <laughs> 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 uh, this is from Forrest Nymph, who says, I do love Simon. It's just a shame he's wrong about everything. <laughs> <laughs> Short and to the point. Uh, we've got more, I believe. So, another... OK, Samara? Lainey said, Oh, did you think JJ's replacement was too liked and tell him to be more unlikable? <gasps> Seriously, Simple Simon was doing well until this week. He was trying too hard. Ugh, some people go get Simon out from the Mark from under the Markle's backside. Yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah. read that Puts one. Puts glasses on. back on. <laughs> yeah, it's a vain. Won't, 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 won't uh, admit he's, you know, nearly blind, but go on. Um... <laughs> I cannot believe what I'm hearing on this show. This is disgusting behaviour for public media. Show respect. If you were my kids, I would be disgusted. Oh. Uh, who, who, who's that from again? It's from Val Grant. Well, Val, uh, we're not your <laughs> kids, so what are you going to do about it? <laughs> uh, well, so, uh, any more? Uh, okay. So, Joyce has said, I agree with everything this woman is saying, but why does she always have to shout? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's that from? That's from uh, Joyce. Uh, well, Joyce, I think uh, Samara has to shout to uh, be heard above me. Uh, <laughs> this is a high volume, <laughs> high volume show. It really is. Uh, got another one, Simon? Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Glasses, come on, come on, come on. Keep down. up. Try to okay, keep okay. up. Um, Poor old boy. Uh, I think Simon London should do his research. Her father, Megan, was bullied by the press. They followed him 24 7. So Simon gets the facts right, and he did not say the lies that came out of Simon's mouth. People that blatantly lie should not be on live TV. I think, and that's I think from he said, I think the what, pixie. I'm going to defend you for a second. Thank you. Not, you're not uh, lying. No, 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 no. If you Kinsey, done Kinsey we don't do that. On <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go on then. We'll defend him then, if you must. You're right. I just think that these, this gives us an opportunity. You just learned something new today. Like, I did. It, you're not lying if you were unaware of it. And if, you know, Thomas Markle has kind of disappeared over the last few yeah. years, so you might yeah. not know all the details. Yeah. No, completely. Yeah. Every day is a school day. And what I do kind of think is interesting is a lot of people who sort of jump in those comments and yell at us and everything else, we're... <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to regurgitate yeah. facts yeah. as quickly right. as possible yeah, on but, the spot. Right. But you're still a liar. Yeah. And on that <laughs> bombshell, we're going to go to a real <laughs> ad or two. What just happened? He's mad at...
as hell, it's Kevin O'Sullivan. Ah, welcome back to What Just Happened. Greatest show ever made, greatest presenter ever, said no one ever. Uh, here's Samara Gill, still with us, uh, still unfortunately with us, Simple Simon London, and our very special guest, Kinsey Schofield, all the way from Redondo Beach, California. So, <laughs> what a pleasure to have her on board. Uh, here's my next incredible monologue. Uh, they missed Taylor Swift's private jet because, uh, it wasn't there. <laughs> Wrong airport, no. But when the crazy climate crew arrived at Stonehenge, they were thrilled to discover that after 5,000 years, unlike Taylor's personal plane, it was still there and a sitting target for their latest orange paint attack. Meanwhile, protesters in the UK and America continue to live in tents determined to stop the war in Gaza through the medium of camping. Others block bridges, cause traffic jams, smash office windows and generally behave like spotty-faced kids taunting teachers with their naughty antics. They operate under a series of unsnappy names like Extinction Rebellion, Insulate Britain, Free Palestine and, of course, Just Stop Oil, otherwise known as Just Stop Everything. I'd like to say that most of these deranged demo dorks are just juvenile jerks who will grow out of this arrant nonsense. But half the Just Stop Oil Brigade are so old that when they zoned in on Stonehenge, you suspected they helped to build it. The two ancient biddies who vandalised the Magna Carta were both well into their 80s. What do they care about the Earth's future? They're not going to be around. One of them was a vicar, for Christ's sake. I guess God works in mysterious ways. But back to those campus campers. And while some of them are wide-eyed students, Others are professional anti-capitalist agitators. How else do you explain the uniform tents, all in the same style and colours? Who's paying for them? How else do you explain that nearly a third of those arrested in angry clashes at New York's prestigious Columbia were not in any way affiliated to the college? And at Oxford, Cambridge, UCLA, of course, Columbia, and many more universities on both sides of the Atlantic, is the pro Palestine fervor spilling over into rampant anti-Semitism. Frightened for their own safety, Jewish students certainly think so. But what is the point of this passion for protest? Does it amount to much more than vacuous virtue signalling by people who don't have to go to work? We're wonderful, these holier-than-thou halo polishers seem to tell us. And you lot, with your jobs, your kids to feed and better things to do, are not. But what does chucking paint at paintings actually achieve? Here's that Just Stop Oil planet-saving technique in full. Proceed to target, spray it orange, get headlines, get arrested, get 50 quid fine, no one cares, nothing happens, repeat. Again and again and again. While China has 1,100 fossil fuel power stations, is building 300 more and spews out 28% of the world's pollution, Britain, it's worth noting, is responsible for less than 1%. In the UK, we could all go back to mud huts and horses and carts, and it would not make a blind bit of green difference. But still, the eco-fanatics carry on with their utterly ineffective, feeble foot-stomping. As Albert Einstein so astutely observed, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Now spare a thought for the good people of Hamtramck, Michigan. In a life-affirming display of Western liberalism, Hamtramck became the first city in America to elect a Muslim majority council. Now, to the horror of the idealistic residents and the local LGBTQ community, the hardline council they voted for has banned pride flags. What a surprise. But top prize for futile protest groups has to go to Queers for Palestine. Gays who rage against tolerant Israel, where homosexuality is legal, and cheer for intolerant Palestine, where the punishment for same-sex relationships is 10 years in a hellhole jail. Go figure. I mean, 
these protests, what, what is the point of it? Nobody pays any attention. OK, the papers like to run it on the front page. We, we talk about it. But they do not move the dial one bit. In what way have Just Stop Oil changed energy policies anywhere in the world? Well, I'm, you're looking at me, so I'm going to assume that you're, you're talking <laughs> I'd, I'd to me. I'd love to know. Well, um, I'm throwing that out to you, Simon. <laughs> yeah. um, now, our, our American friends might, know, not, might not know, but we're in the middle of an election here, and so the politicians are campaigning, and nearly all of them have had to talk about their green policies because I think that these protest groups have put mm. the green agenda on the map. Whatever people want, want, to, want to sort of... However people want to look at that, I think that's true. Uh, do, you, uh, do you want to know what... I I think they can do with their green agenda. I, I'm they can sure. Stick it right up their f***ing asses. <laughs> it's a load of <laughs> net zero <laughs> rubbish. No, Kevin's completely right. Imperial College actually released a thing that said that if we achieve net zero tomorrow, nothing would change and that we would still have to adapt to how the climate is evolving. And actually, the climate will get hot and then it will get cold. And that's Imperial College saying that, so try and fight it. Okay, but being I mean, honestly. But being sustainable is not just about being net... Sustain you know it's not just about net zero, I don't want to be sustainable. It's not just about net zero. I don't want to be sustainable. Being sustainable Why do I want to be sustainable? I want, to I want to drive Honestly. a gasoline car. I, I want, want to use straw. electricity. I just want a straw. That's not going to pay Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I just want a plastic straw. It's, what's interesting is people went undercover to these Just Stop Oil groups and they actually saw that they were meeting at a Pret every day. So to drink <laughs> imported coffee uh, out of a non-reusable plastic cup. Um, and that's how they're doing it. So they're not even practising their own... I mean... Yeah. I mean, kids, I mean, Samara's right that the hypocrisy uh, among green pr pressure groups is off the scale. Uh, you know, this Just Stop Oil mob, they don't give a damn about the environment. They know that what they're doing, as I say, doesn't move the dial at all. They just want to be in the papers and say, look at us, aren't we wonderful? They don't give a shit about climate change. Uh, but in America, uh, your fine country, uh, God's own country, uh, they allowed fracking. Uh, and they got from the fracking process uh, 125, maybe 150 years worth of cheap energy. We here, uh, polishing our halos, vacuous virtue signalers that we are, Rishi Sunak uh, and all that, uh, we didn't frack because it's going to save the environment. Uh, and guess what? Uh, we have to buy in our energy from America's fracked energy sources. It is hypocrisy. It is just moving the uh, pieces around the board to make it look as if we're green. It's nonsense, isn't I it? I mean, it's it's crazy. It's virtue signaling for sure. Uh, but I do think with these protesters, it's an act of rebellion and attention seeking. Yes. Um, and I, I mean, I, I feel like we used to look at our government. We used to be inspired by them and think, if I want to make a change, I'm going to get involved mm -hmm. in government and somehow, somehow that's how I'm going to do mm -hmm. it. But our, you know, our, our officials have become such an embarrassment. And I'm talking about America too. Mm -hmm. Our officials have become such an embarrassment, um, hi hypocrites mm. that we don't aspire to be these people anymore. And this is the way, I guess, there, I guess the the alternative is to take to the streets and spray Let paint Taylor this, Swift's uh, plane. Yeah, 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 ta yeah, I love that. So they, they, let's get Taylor Swift's plane. By the way, in terms, you know, there's me saying I don't really care about uh, environmental issues. I don't believe them. I think they're concocted. I don't think we have a climate change emergency. I but we do. Climate change, <laughs> climate change is happening. Uh, it always did. Uh, the question on the table is how much does humanity uh, contribute? It. Uh, maybe a little bit, but not much. Not maybe much. A lot. Uh, who caused climate change uh, before humans were here? Uh, there was a lot of climate change when the dinosaurs were around. What were they doing? Driving cars and watching the telly. Yeah, but the dinosaurs didn't have an industrial revolution and put loads of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Yeah, but, so. but climate change well, the climate change was actually more rampant during their days. So and by the way, the you cannot, it's, it's, it's arrogance <laughs> to say it's humanity. Also, the industrial revolution lifted multiple millions of people out of poverty. So when we talk about energy, it's actually mm. extremely privileged to say, oh, green energy, no. green energy. I mean, it actually is not great for, first of all, third world countries. And then, you know, we can sit on a high horse here and say, oh, we're going to use wind farms. Arms, but it's China and America that are actually providing us with the with the yes. electricity that we use and you know so, through fracking. So it's kind of ridiculous that you can just 
say that we should employ green policies with no base. There's no yeah. base for that you argument. Say, you say there's a climate change emergency. Well, I've listened to some of these climate change bores. And uh, what they say is, if we don't do something 10 years, 10 years, we've got to do something within 10 years. So when your house is on fire, and uh, do you phone the fire brigade 999 or 911 in America, and you go, we've got an emergency, get around here in 10 years, can you? Because my house is on fire, so it's not an emergency, it's a is terrible it? terrible analogy. We know that we are losing... We're, lo we are losing <laughs> species, we're losing flora, we're losing fauna, the ice perhaps are melting. Yeah, and I've said this before in this programme, I don't mind if changing my behaviour and we turn out to be wrong, but we accidentally oh, so actually, have, a be have a better world. So, so Kitty, Simon wants us to do it on a wing and a prayer. Let's completely yeah. change our lifestyle. Let's all live in mud huts and ride horses instead of cars. I've never said just, that. Just, just, just <laughs> in yeah. case. Just in case. Yeah, yeah and also, just meanwhile, China's not going to stop. So no. what does it Let's, even matter? But no. actually, actually, if you look at what China is doing to combat climate change and to sort of... Oh, yeah, if you, rap, to if pivot, you want to talk about and, their and electric cars, don't even... Cut, like Simon! Right, Sorry. come on. <laughs> One <laughs> set, they've got 1,100, 1,100 fossil fuel but also, yes, They're building three... You. Wait, wait, wait. They're building 300 more <laughs> and they are exploring for more coal seams. Don't say China is doing the square root of... All about it, it is climate afraid. change. It is, I'm They're afraid. Just you look not. at the, so, well, you look at the solar paper farms straw. they have. Oh, rubbish. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We buy windmills and solar panels in order to be sustainable, our green future. Where do we buy them from? China, who are constructing them yes. with power that comes out of fossil fuel power stations. It's ludicrous. I, it's, I don't mind some sacrifices when it comes to this, but for, the, but for <laughs> America and as specifically the state of California to say, we're going to, everybody needs Needs to have an electric car, but there are weeks out of summer where Gavin Newsom tells me I can't use my air conditioning mm. because they're afraid we'll have rolling blackouts. That makes absolutely no sense for us all to have electric cars when we're fearful of rolling blackouts. Yeah. You know, it's common sense. You, you mean Gavin Newsom, the uh, next president of the United States of America? Get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> he did to LA. Put that in there. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Look, I know as well that sort of the making of electric cars. I know that there are problems around that with the batteries and getting rid of the batteries and how they're not as green as we think they are. But I don't think there's anything wrong with you got a battery. Have you got an electric car? No, I have. Yeah, I like a hypocrite. See, there you go. <laughs> I didn't think. What do you got? I bet you got a diesel four wheeler. <laughs> and on that bombshell, it's time for a real break. <laughs> Welcome back to What Just Happened. Uh, now, what just happened in Britain, uh, I don't know if our American viewers noticed it. Uh, I think it did go viral around the world. But what just happened uh, to the west of London, a place uh, that, again, our uh, viewers abroad might uh, find amusing to know is called Stains. <laughs> <laughs> I, grew up, I grew up near Staines. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah Staines. <laughs> Horrible name for a town. Uh, it's actually quite a nice town on the, on the te banks of the River Thames. Anyway, uh, a uh, cow, a uh, little calf, uh, went on the loose, uh, escaped from a, a nearby farm and went on the run through the streets. Uh, of this uh, area in West London. And uh, the police were called because it was running wild. Uh, you know, a slight kind of public safety issue. Uh, yes, police should get there. And what are they going to do about this? Uh, so uh, what they did, uh, for two hours, for two hours, they stood around sort of, uh, you know, contemplating their navels, saying, well, what do we do about it? What do we do about it? And in the end, they kept, the coppers came up with a brilliant plan. They had a big, one of those big four-wheeler diesel police cars, like the one you drive, Simon. Uh, and, <laughs> no, it was a big old... Uh, it wasn't just a normal police uh, vehicle. It was a massive thing. Uh, so what they decided to do is this poor little cow was just trotting around. They just drove at it oh. at 30 miles an hour, knocked it senseless, mm. and then reversed, and then went at it again. Uh, the poor little thing miraculously survived. Actually, some of the neighbours said that they actually rammed it about 
ramming a cow and something in that, isn't there? They ran the cow about uh, four times, maybe five, but they are admitting to two uh, at 30 miles an hour. Miraculously, the poor little thing, uh, it was a girl, it was called Bo Lucy, uh, survived, but a big gash on her and, and seems to be all right now, uh, which is, you know, very uh, good news. Uh, but uh, everybody went berserk, just quite rightly. You know, this is not the solution. So uh, let's go to Samara. My uh, uh, advice to those coppers who came up with this brilliant solution, I've got two words for you. Tranquilizer and dart. <laughs> Why didn't they do that? Well, I mean, what a stupid solution to that problem. I don't know. I'm going to surprise you as the vegetarian, but honestly, I think that... They, they were damned if they did and they were damned if they didn't because... No, no, way, no, no, no. They no. were damned if they did. No, and... <laughs> no. Well, they are damned now and, you know, the unions have got involved and that's going to get very messy, I can assure you. But, um, you know, if that calf hit someone, then the police would be in trouble. The issue is that, obviously, they didn't have the training, they didn't have the tranquilizer darts. I mean... If, yeah, if but they could have got them. I mean, I'm not saying that police... Uh, cop cars could go around, should go around with tranquilizer darts, although come to think of it, it might be a good idea. Uh, but uh, they should keep them at the police station. They should have a low... Every area should have a vet on call yeah. who's available to do this. Wouldn't have to be a cat. I mean, you know, they behaved like it was a sabre-toothed tiger but on the loose or something. But it was in a decently busy street. And also, you know, like, you know, the cops in London, they're not... Uh, in England, they're not kind of skilled with shooting because they don't carry guns. <laughs> so what if they shot a person with a tranquilizer dart instead? Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think ramming it was the only solution, and I'm it sorry. It wasn't the only tranquilizer dart. So, Kinsey, Kinsey, your thoughts? No, I mean, I don't understand how your protesters can glue themselves to the street and people can die in ambulances because they're unable to get to the hospital. Uh. But we freaking take care of a cow this way. You know, I think, I feel like protesters in this country jeopardize people's lives way more than this cow was yeah. ever jeopardizing someone's life. Well, the, the, uh, the Home Secretary, James Cleverly, was furious about it and the coppers are sort of admitting that, uh, you know, maybe we need to look at this, we need to have a vet on call. Uh, the leader of the Farmers Union bizarrely said that uh, they didn't have any other choice. But what do you think, uh, Simon? I just think, I mean, the pictures are horrific mm -hmm. and I think when the pictures are that horrific, then it becomes a massively emotive issue. I'm, so, I'm sort of leaning more to Samara's idea that they're damned if they do damned if they don't. They don't have. They tried to call the vet ten times. They tried to call the vet. Apparently, this um this young calf was um, was chasing people and, and ramming other vehicles. And actually, it became sort of a, a real safety issue. Mm. And it seemed that that was the only course yeah. left open to them. Yeah. So, but but I, I don't think I think there are lots of other solutions they could have. Uh, yeah. Rounded called it another up. vet. Yeah. yeah. Call <laughs> a vet. Yeah. 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 The thing yeah. Is, the thing is that so the copper who drove the vehicle. I mean to show that the police do realise that uh, maybe this wasn't the best thing to do. Uh, is now suspended from frontline mm. yeah. duties. And, and 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 to be fair, I'm not saying that that copper and his uh, colleagues are cruel people who wanted to harm an animal. I just think in the heat of the moment, they yeah, made a very bad... I think bad, they made a very, very bad a wrong decision. Well, yeah. A very bad this weekend. A very bad... We've got to go. we got to go now. Uh, we're going to go to break now, but thank you so much, uh, Kinsey Schofield. Hasn't she been amazing, folks? Yeah, brilliant. Well done, Kinsey. Uh, Samara and Simon are going to stick around and we're going to go through the mailbag next. So stay where you are. This is what is that <laughs> What just happened? He's mad as hell. It's Kevin O'Sullivan. Uh, welcome back. I'm still with my very special guest, Simple Simon London and uh, the brilliant Samara Gill. And this is the part of the show. We've already looked at a couple of them, but uh, let's have uh, a look through our mailbag where all the fans of the show send in how much they appreciate me, how much they love me. Uh, uh, so I enjoy this part of the show, but seriously, we do very much uh, appreciate you sending in your thoughts. We get lots and lots of messages. So uh, let's uh, present to you a selection of them. Uh, I guess, uh, ladies first, Simon. <laughs> uh, you're so funny. Here we go. <laughs> um, uh, well, this one is this one's from K8JB8TG, yeah. who says, "Why is Kevin shouting so much? In fact, they all are." 
it feels like a real argument, but I think Kevin's approach to conducting a discussion is awful. <laughs> and God forbid someone disagrees with him, he'll just shout at you and tell you to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or off. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that one from? Uh, that was from a series of letters. So, well, a series of letters. I, I have to accept, uh, you know, I'm a modest man. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I have to accept you've got a point there. Uh, when I am contradicted, I tend to shout people down. I've got to get out of that habit, but I never f will. Uh, over to you, Samara. What have you got? David says, sorry, I could not watch anymore when Simon London and his mouth began his woke nonsense. <laughs> Get rid of this man! <laughs> if only we could. <laughs> if only we could. Uh, having been unable to get rid of him, we have to introduce him again. What do you got, Simon? Uh, dear Simon, you have the patience of steel. <laughs> you are <laughs> always... Put hang on, hang on. <laughs> What, the patience of steel? Yes. Right, we'll come back to that, go steel on. Steel has patience. Yeah, 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 go on. You are always put down and sweared at. It's not right the way Kevin is so aggressive. However, I don't agree with anyone saying Meghan Markle is a good person. The way she treated the royal family and now the way she is treating Harry is not right. Oh, so she's uh, one of us. Well, uh, so... <laughs> uh, mi mi <laughs> mixed messages there, but I want to go back to the patience of steel. Yes. Is that an, uh, an expression? No, I've heard of the man of steel and yeah. the patience of a saint. So patience maybe, of a saint. So maybe that's they've just put the two together. Yeah, so. <laughs> I think that's what they've done. OK, Samara, uh, what have you got? Uh, um, what, what more praise for me have you got? Sorry, I can't listen to the guy who continually, who continuously sticks up for the market. Calls. He talks total rubbish. Uh, that I would mean, be uh, well, you, wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, who's that from again, Samara? Uh, that's from Joslyn. Joslyn. Well, Joslyn, uh, you've hit the nail on the head. Uh, but uh, don't worry, he's only there. He's only here so that we can laugh at him. He's the village idiot. Simple Simon London. Uh, got any more, Simon? This one is from Ingrid Liu, and uh, it's all in capital letters, but I'm not going to yell so it. So it must be important. It says, Simon. Get away from those two stupid, interrupting, egocentric... Mean... Uh, what? what was she saying? <laughs> mean, <laughs> useless presenters. We think that silly lady <laughs> should not be allowed. Please, <laughs> please fire Kevin and spoilt woman. <laughs> there are many better presenters who are not so insecure uh, to let them in continuously interrupt decent Simon. And that's from... Ben and Colin. Ben oh, and Colin. Yeah. But ben and Colin. Ingrid, yeah. Ben and, uh, and Colin. Ben and Colin. I think they might be. They're friends of mine, I think. Oh, Ben and Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Look, still, I really silly think Silly lady is actually not the worst thing anyone's ever said to me, so I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll take uh, it. but... Uh, <laughs> What, what, read that out again. What did you? Well, it's from an Ingrid at the top, and, and then, then Ben and Colin. Ben and Colm. Ben and Colm. Oh, Colm. 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 Perhaps, perhaps Colm can't spell Colin. Ah, yeah. There you go. Uh, but uh, yeah, no, good points. Yeah. Very good points. Yeah. Silly lady. Uh, yeah. Uh, and the last one from silly the silly lady. lady. <laughs> uh, I will never understand why Simon is part of this show. Kevin is extremely disrespectful to Simon, and him and that female. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> No, thanks. For, at least the gender was right. Um, knows nothing and is disrespectful to Simon and pretends in jest. And Simon that, is really simple. Uh, and who's that from again? Uh, that's from April. So, April, uh, you say you will never understand why Simon uh, is part of this show. And I've got to tell you, I'm pretty perplexed about that myself <laughs> as well. So, uh, we'll see what we can do. We had another one, uh, another sort of Meghan Harry maniac, uh, JJ Annecy Obi. I got rid of him. I bet I can sort this guy as well. Uh, so, you be careful, Simon. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for all your help on the show and supporting me, silly lady. Uh, let's go to a bad ad. <laughs> a group of young Australians had come to tour Hong Kong, but all of them made sure their Lipton tea bags came along. We did off. They all said morning, noon, and night when Mr. Brown of Sydney Town saw an unexpected sight. Hey, everybody I presume that's uh, yes, Australian. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the Barnes Steakhouse? Uh, no, well, I, actually, you're I'm a vegetarian. vegetarian. I was grown up by him.
hippies. I'm a vegetarian. I never saw the inside of that place. When you say you were grown by, you were grown by <laughs> vegans. Literally, they watered yeah, you. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Through the soil. <laughs> so you don't go. What is it called? The barns. The barns steakhouse. The barns like steakhouse. Great place. In Mount Gambia. Mount Gambia. Mount Gambia. Yeah. Oh. That's where they, they can take the, yeah. Is Mount Gambia near Sydney or anything like that? It's in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it might have been in Gambia. Yeah, it looks see. like lovely steak, though. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, on that bombshell, on that meat-based bombshell, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, I've been Kevin O'Sullivan. You've been an amazing audience. He's been Simon. Cerebral Simon. Love Cerebral him. Simon. She's been Samara Gill. We'll be back same time, same place, right here on What Just Happened. Don't go anywhere. What Just Happened?